everyone, my name is Adam and welcome to the video. This video is a continuation of those who want to crack their legally obtained handshake files except on a Windows computer. Previously I did this video on the Mac operating system. The flow is kind of the same. There's going to just be a little bit of differences. If you haven't done so already and need to download Hashcat, go over to hashcat.net. I will put all the links in the description box below. You want to find the Hashcat binaries up here and download the file. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do this again. The file will download in a 7-zip format. If you do not have 7-zip, you can Google it. It's a free and useful program. I highly recommend it. Second of all, the password that we're going to try and crack must be within the password list we will be using. If the password is not within that password list, we will not be able to crack this handshake, and I will demonstrate this a little later on. So I'm going to be working within my downloads directory, and if you follow along, you should be able to do everything I'm doing step by step. So go ahead and download Hashcat and unzip it if you haven't done so already in your downloads directory. And now go ahead and plug in your Ponagachi. Come over here to the command window. We need to make sure we can talk to our device. So we're going to type ping, and then most likely your IP address is going to be 10.0.0.2. You should get a reply. Now that we have a reply, let's go ahead and CD to downloads. This is where I want to send the handshakes. So I'm going to type SCP space dash R the user on my Ponagachi, which happens to be pi, at 10.0.0.2. Now, my handshakes live within colon forward slash root handshakes forward slash. This will copy the entire handshakes folder, and I want to copy it to C colon backslash users the name of your computer, mine happens to be x1 backslash downloads. Now if we hit enter, we should get prompted for our device's password. Mine's going to be Raspberry. And as you can see, it copied the handshake files. Now you might stall out on this screen, just hit enter again and see if it reprompts. It can be 50-50, but it looks like we're good here. And if we just do a DIR, we can see that I have a handshakes folder. So now what we need to do is if we take a look at our handshakes folder, we can see that I have two handshake files. One is going to be useful and one is going to be useless. And I want to show you what a useless file looks like so you don't waste your time with it. We're going to need to convert this PCAP file into what's known as an HC22000 file. We can do that using Hashcat's online converter. That's how easy they've made this. So we're going to come over here I'm going to go to my handshakes folder and I believe it's this one. And if I attempt to convert this, we will see handshake extraction failed. That means this file has absolutely no use to me. So I'm not even going to bother with it. Now if we come back over here, We do this file, convert, handshake extraction successful. So we know this file is good to use. So we'll go ahead and download. This will give us a really long name. This will give us a really long name file ending in HC22000. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to come back to our terminal here. I'm going to CD back to downloads. And as I said, I've already unzipped Hashcat, so Hashcat is in my downloads directory right here. 
So an easier way to do this is I am going to go to the downloads folder. I'm going to take my HC22000 file and I'm going to put it in my open Hashcat directory. The other thing you'll want to do is get you a working password list. Now you'll have to Google that because I'm not going to provide it. All you have to do on Google is type password list and you'll be able to find some. This is the specific password list I will be using. Okay, now that we're in the Hashcat directory, we've moved our captured handshake file to this directory as well as our password list. Now what we're going to do is we're going to type hashcat dash M two two zero 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 or 22,000 dash A zero, the name of your captured converted file. So mine is one something you can usually tab to auto complete this. And then the name of your password file. Now this is a short password file that I'm using, so it should read rather quickly. Okay, as you can see, it read rather quickly. It did not recover anything, because this is the line we're looking for where it says recovered. We see zero out of one. Nothing was recovered at this point. So remember, as I mentioned, that your password must be within the password list for this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my Hashcat directory here. Now, my password happens to be shiny purple tomatoes 24 exclamation point. So we just randomly go through this list. We'll do shiny purple tomatoes. Click Save. If we run this again, we should get the same result. And just like before, nothing was recovered. Even though my password is broken up within that password list, it does not match what it needs to. Okay, so let's make this work. So now what we'll do is we'll add the password to the list. And if we run this again, we should get a recovered password. There we go. Recovered one out of one. And if we look up here, we can see CC Sec Labs, which was the name of my access point, and then the password shiny purple tomatoes 24. Now, what's cool about Hashcat is it remembers the password hashes. So if we go to run this again, it will crack it instantly because it reads what's called a pot file or where it stores this hash goes into that pot file so if we run it again it's just going to tell us that it's in a pot file all hash is found as a pot file so hopefully you found this useful this is how i basically go about if i wanted to crack any captured handshakes on windows as always i'm adam thank you for watching and until then i'll see you in the next one